<laughs> oh God, that wasn't my head. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to be invited out here to the Volvo headquarters in Gothenburg, Sweden to check out a collaboration between Volvo and POC that will, for the first time ever, test exactly what happens in a collision between a car and a bike. Volvo and POC have been collaborating for a number of years to improve safety for cyclists on the roads. This has taken a few forms over the years, including the concept of a helmet that can connect to a car to warn a driver that there is a cyclist nearby. More recently though, they've collaborated on the map of collisions, which tracks the exact location of collisions between cyclists and cars in Sweden. They then use this data to work out exactly the types of areas where cyclists and cars are coming into contact. This latest collaboration though could be really interesting for anyone that ever rides a bike. For the first time ever, Volvo and POC are going to be testing exactly what happens when a cyclist is involved in a collision with a car. They then aim to use this data to help reduce the risk of injury or death when cyclists are involved in collisions with cars. We have seen a lot of comments on this sort of project in the past along the lines of why are we focusing on this? We should just be separating bikes and cars completely. And yes, absolutely. In an ideal world, cars and bikes would never come into contact. Unfortunately though, this isn't the world we live in. And at least for the near future, cars and bikes will continue to come into contact. And there will unfortunately be collisions between the two. So I think that it is incredibly important that companies like POC and Volvo are trying their best to ensure that when these collisions do happen, the consequences are as minor as possible. That in no way changes the fact that a car should never be in a position to hit a cyclist in the first place. It's just nice to know that if it does happen, the cyclist will be as safe as possible. I'm about to go and meet Magdalena Lindsman. Magdalena is the technical expert of traffic safety data analysis at Volvo and also a member of the POC Lab. The POC Lab is a collection of experts from various industries that advise POC to ensure that any protective clothing or helmets that they produce are the best they can possibly be. This makes Magdalena the perfect person to ask a few questions about today's test. Magdalena, thank you for joining us today. What is it that you're looking for from these tests? What results are you after? So. We figure that cyclist crashes are really complex. They come in all various kinds of types, and the most common cyclist crash are single cyclist crashes. Um, then you have a portion of uh, cyclist to cyclist crashes yeah. and cyclist to pedestrian crashes, and then a small portion is cyclist to motor vehicle crashes. Our approach is to avoid the crash as a whole. We don't want to get into situations with unprotected road users, so we introduced the pedestrian detection system with Autobrake already in 2010. Then we also came up with the cyclist detection with Autobrake in 2012. So you previously worked with POC to create the map of collisions. What was it about the number of accidents you saw that inspired you to create that map? So the map of conflicts, that's really the guidance into the we will crash data. So it's, it's a picture on how we classify crashes of cars to cyclists. Yeah. And uh, what we learn from the crash data is definitely being used in all the collaboration that we're doing together with PAC. Pockets. I can't like this. So just before we actually do the test, I'm joined by Magnus Gustafsson, who is head of the hard goods over at POC, who's going to talk us through exactly what's going to happen in this test. You can see I'm holding the helmet, which is going to be the test subject, and you have in your hands... I have a pedestrian uh, head, head form. Uh, or well, today a cyclist, because we're going to put a helmet uh, on. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So it's not, not the body, it's just the head form, and it has accelerometers inside to measure all the par different parameters that we want to look into. Yeah and that head is going to be fired to the Volvo behind us via this giant ram above us, yeah. which looks quite intimidating when you stand right underneath it. It's going to be measured, what speed are they doing it at? 35 kilometers per hour. So the sort of speed that you might encounter in a city yeah. in this sort of crash? Exactly. At the crossing, um, if you get hit by a car, that's the like, average speed that you actually uh, get hit by, yeah. 35 kilometers per hour. And you're doing it at certain angles based on research from Volvo and from yourselves? Yeah, and there are some standards uh, involved here as well, saying, okay, yes. telling us the standard. Um, but we will also look into different different angles and different speeds and see see what, what happens actually. The teamwork that you're doing together 
Yeah. It's the first time a helmet has ever been tested on a car, isn't it? Yeah. That's Which makes it really exciting. Yeah. So we don't actually know what information we're going to get from this test at the moment. Yeah, we will look into both the uh, straight impacts and of course we will look into uh, all the rotational uh, impacts as well. Uh, what the accelerations actually are, how big they are and yeah. uh, how big, this, how big uh, the speeds that we actually reach. Um, and then we, we want to modify um, the helmet in different ways to see what we actually can make better and improve okay, yes. in, in this situation. So the information you get from today, the data that you collect, that will go directly towards development of helmets in the future? Definitely, yes. Well, I'm quite looking forward to the results and hopefully when they do come through in a minute, you can talk us through what we see. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you, Magnus, and good luck with the test. Thank you. Today, we are starting by firing a replica human head weighing four and a half kilos and filled with sensors to collect crash information. We will be beginning with a 35 km per hour impact at 60 degrees, but the testing won't be stopping there. Volvo will be utilizing their catalog of collision data from years of testing and real world impacts to conduct tests that meet the criteria of all this data, building together with POC a greater understanding of exactly what happens within these collisions. The thing that blows me away the most is that looking at the bonnet, you actually can't see there's been an impact until you get down really close and you can see in the fold of the metal, there is actually a crease in it. It's absorbed so much energy and it's sprung back almost to its original shape, but it isn't quite there 100%. In the slow motion, it looks like you're dropping a stone into a pond. It ripples so much, but it's absorbed the energy of the impact, which is gonna protect the occupant of the helmet, most importantly, but it also means you can carry on driving. To help us get a better understanding of why tests like today are being conducted, I'm joined by Klaus Holting, MD, PhD of POC Lab, who's going to help explain things further. Klaus, what is it about the tests that we conducted today that are so important for the future, going forwards for injury prevention and safety on the roads? Um, prevention is difficult because it uh, uh, has low status earlier and people didn't really pay enough attention to everything you can do in order to prevent serious damage after various types of crashes. And it's not until you actually take this seriously and take it to this level where you can have actual testing on, on how a uh, um, real situation occurs and actually also what happens de facto in a real situation. Uh, impact, uh, when you have a vehicle hitting a pedestrian or a car hitting a a bicycling person and, and seeing and understanding what actually is going on. It's difficult in real life to see what's actually happening with your brain and a concussion when, when these things happen. But at least during a session like this at Volvo in their magnificent lab, uh, it gives us a much better understanding and also it gives everyone involved uh, a realistic view on the seriousness of this and, and how, how important it is to try to do extremely much to prevent these things because uh, you don't get the feeling for the enormous violence impact until you are in the lab and see this happening in front of you. To get a perspective of the tests that we've seen today, I'm now joined by Per Hamid, who is a brain injury specialist. Per Hamid, thank you for joining us. Thank you. What, what was it about the test today that you found so interesting going forward? How are they going to use that information to help protect the brain? Well, it was very, it was very interesting uh, to see uh, the test uh, uh, and how cars have been developed now. When you have an impact, how the car uh, absorbs the energy when this kind of uh, the helmet with a head uh, uh, hits. It was really amazing to see yeah. with this high speed can, uh, camera. Yeah. Uh, and the interesting thing was that the, the, you saw that the absorption of, of the impact was the car. The helmet wasn't that effective. 
which was really interesting. It's the opportunity in, in actually having collaboration with, uh, with the car manufacturers like Volvo, uh, who are thought leaders when it comes to uh, like some protection of, of, uh, within the car, but also now that you're, uh, you know, we, 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 can, we consider also what's going on around the car. Uh, pedestrians, uh, bicyclists, etc. There is a lot of knowledge and, and combining different angles in an innovation pro, uh, uh, in this kind of innovation projects uh, will improve uh, and develop uh, uh, equipment so you reach more of a protective effect rather than just sitting in your own chamber trying to, to be smart. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting with, from an in innovation dimension being creative. For me, as a clinician, when I work or in the research, uh, you know, we, we, we are not aware of what, what actually happened when people had the accident. Yeah, you might get a report, but it's rare. How have they analyzed what actually happened? I, I see the consequences and I work with the consequences, but the, the impact itself. So the interesting now in this collaboration, going from an experimental setting into real life monitoring, combining that kind of information, I think will really bring us forward in how to both develop more protective equipment as well as having strategies in how to minimize the consequences if you have an impact. So to answer my final questions, I now have Oscar Hus, who is head of development at POC and a member of the POC lab team as well. What we've seen in the test today, I want to know how long is it going to take before the results of that are implemented in helmet design and in car design? How long will it take from today's tests to actual real world application? Yeah, so um, depending on what we see in the testing, it depends. Like we can see something that's, um, that's fairly simple to solve uh, with an update of construction or materials or something that we actually know that we have technology for. Uh, but we sometimes also find things that are like, wow, that's something unexpected and that might require a completely new test setup and okay. more research and new test method or whatever. So it depends, but in the, in the, in the most simple cases uh, and if there's something that we know that with existing technologies we could address this issue, then we're looking at around 18 months until a customer sees it. Today they may well be researching this together behind closed doors, but the data they collect will be released and made available to other manufacturers, enabling more of us to benefit from their cutting edge testing. This is all in the name of creating a safer environment out on the open road for everyone, no matter which end product you choose to use. And I think that is pretty special. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please give us a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel.